All right, so um, all right, let's let's go through this very quickly as fast as we can, and then from, uh, we'll we'll talk about other things. Okay, so this is about internet and web. Uh, if you have already seen it, you should know the difference between internet and web, but it's the worldwide network of computers. It uses the protocol known as internet protocol, also known as IP. Uh, the nodes on the network, are, oh sorry, it has many sub protocols like TCP IP, UDP IP, etc. And TCP IP allows for reliable packet delivery. So what that means is rather than just spraying a whole bunch of packets at each other and some of you you receive and some of them you don't receive or they arrive in all different orders etc that's not how tcp ip is that's exactly how udp ip is um, it just udp means universal data gram, gram protocol where each so it's like a bunch of uh, packets uh, or telegrams kind of thing um, a single letter so you send a whole bunch of letters to somebody and they get most of them but not all of them and they might get them in in a random order like you you might sell send them in one order and they might receive it in a slightly different order so that is what udp ip is tcp ip is you send a letter and they send an acknowledgement only after you get the acknowledgement you send another one and then they send an acknowledgement for that too uh, and so on and so forth Actually, yeah, um, um, no, I'm slightly wrong on that. You don't actually wait for the acknowledgement. You keep sending letters. And then after a certain number of letters are sent, meaning say after the buffer is filled, that's when you stop and then you wait. Hey, uh, you know, can you please make sure you tell me that you received all those packets and the acknowledgement comes, then you start sending again. So TCP IP is, is more usable but slower udp ip is much faster but of course it's useful for high speed communication such as video and audio and all that so when you're using video audio a few dro packets dropped here and there should not break the deal okay so that's the difference between the two let's talk about ip address ip address is 32 bit number uh, does everybody here know what 32 bit number really means? You know, number of bits in a number. What? Why is it important? I'm assuming that. What? Correct. Yeah, so each bit, each bit gives you two possibilities, 0 and 1. Right, so each bit gives you two possibilities. If it's an 8-bit number, that means the two possi possibilities in eight different places, which means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 8 times, basically 2 to the power 8 are the number of possibilities. So in this case, when you have 32-bit number, there is two, 2 to the power 32 possibilities, which I think is 4 gig. That's how many 4 billion plus uh, addresses are possible. Uh, so you write them as, you know, decimal numbers, uh, four decimal numbers separated by dots. Uh, so 192.168.3.55 is an example. Each number is one byte long. Um, so like I said, uh, there are there's 32 bit divided by 4 is 8 bits. 8 bits is 1 byte, so the possibilities are uh, 256. So the actual numbers are always from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1, so 255. In this case. Uh, so the, uh, it, it is a unique address of the computer connected to the internet, so that means, and it doesn't have to be internet, it can be any network. Within that network, the IP address has to be unique. Okay. And obviously the number sort of indicates to the rest of the network how to reach it, right? So, you know, if, if somebody gives your address 123 Main Street, uh, St. Augustine, Florida, 
and Florida is in USA. So somebody can figure out, okay, first you go to US, then you find Florida, then you find St. Augustine, then you find Main Street, and then you find the house number one to three, right? Similarly, uh, in, a, in an IP address, you first find the highest order network, then the next level, then next level, and then you keep, make your way to this. Okay. All right, so that was IPv4, 32-bit, <coughs> 4 gig numbers, right? Well, that's, 4 gig sounds like a lot of uh, numbers, a lot of space, and a large address space, but guess what? We ran out of the, the those, and now we need mm, a bigger address space, so IPv6, which has 128-bit uh, addresses, so <coughs> I don't even know 2 to the power 128 is how much, but it's pretty big. So that's how many. Uh, that's a lot of lot of uh, nodes on the network. So let's talk about TCP/IP. We already spoke a little bit about it. TCP/IP. Hold on. Uh, let me see. So who has anybody else joined? Joseph um, and Daniela is there. Good. Okay. Uh, now TCP/IP is a, is a reliable tr uh, protocol as opposed to UDP/IP because each packet is uh, you know is sent and then an acknowledgement comes back. So if there is any loss of packets, it is tracked. Plus, the sender sends all the packets a few a few packets that the receiver might receive them in in. Uh, uh, like out of order, but then uh, the uh, TCP IP layer uh, combines them back into the correct sequence. So, so sequence is important also. So, lost packets get retransmitted because if you don't receive an acknowledgement within a certain time, uh, you just resend them without even like waiting because you waited for the acknowledgement, you didn't get it, so just retransmit. Uh, now, TCP IP and actually UDP as well, both of them use port numbers. Now port numbers are important to understand because within an IP address, you can have port numbers going from one to 64K. Hey, can you give me a second? So, uh, <clears throat> uses port numbers from one to 64K, okay? So think of port IP address as let's say your street address okay now uh, think of uh, ports as like windows in the house okay so, so imagine a server with 64,000 windows uh, server being the house and the ports being 64,000 windows in the house. sort of like that or doors if you will so the so port number is basically an address within the IP address uh, so that multiple processes can run simultaneously. So one of the questions that was asked was, you know, why do we, we have that many ports? Well, you can either, uh, you're gonna have one byte or two bytes or four bytes, right? Four bytes is too many, four gig, that's just too many. One byte is too, too little, like 256 addresses, 256 ports is just not enough. Uh, so that's why two bytes um, yields 64,000, 64K uh, ports. So <clears throat> that's the meaning of port. Okay. And uh, the port numbers from 121024 are special ports. Um, I think uh, we should just, uh, I'm just going to rush through this whole thing because I think you guys have seen this. You don't need to me to repeat all of this. Let's just, let's just go through this. So let me just, uh, I'll, I'll just go through this slide and you ask me anything, anything to ask on this. Well, from missing from this is HTTP and, okay. All right, so then DNS names. Okay, this is something you guys should uh, uh, know, understand pretty well. So DNS names are basically, you know, whatever you type into it, at a bar. But then, that part is easy. The, uh, but it's important to understand, you know, 
what a TLD is, top level domain. So .net, .com, .edu. And it's not always one word. It can be two words, like co.uk, right? Co.in. In. Though, the, even though it is two words, two levels, it is not, uh, it, the, the, those two together make the top level domain. Okay. So, and there are these companies that, you know, sell you domains under those top level domains. So these are the host names. Let's go the web built. Okay. Yeah. So this is the key thing. The web is built on top of internet. It is not same as the internet, but you know, people, we, a lot of times, even us technical people, we use terms interchangeably. Uh, primary communication protocol is HTTP, unlike internet where the primary communication protocol is IP, or you can say TCP IP uh, to some extent, or the UDP IP is there as well. But here the protocol is HTTP. Um, HTML is a document format, not a protocol. CSS is the styling language for HTML. JavaScript is for client side programming. Okay. Then the other things that you sling over HTTP in addition to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript are the assets, which are media like images, audio, video, etc. All right, let's talk about HTTP itself. It's a text based protocol built on top of IC, TCP IP. Uh, so that's important. TCP IP, as you saw so far. It's a reliable stream-based protocol. It is, as opposed to UDP, which is a packet-oriented protocol. Or do you know the difference between stream versus packet? Stream is, yeah, go ahead. Yes, yep, yep, yep. So packet is like quanta, like packets are, you know, quantum packets. So. You send, you, you don't, in, in a stream, you start writing characters uh, and you keep writing them. And the other end, they come out in the same order, but they are one byte at a time and that's how it is. Uh, in case of UDP, which is a packet oriented uh, or datagram oriented uh, protocol, where you, you write, okay, here is a 80 byte message I'm sending you and I will receive all those 80 bytes together. I will not receive parts of those 80 bytes. I either receive all of it, the entire 80 bytes, or I might receive none of it. There is no in between. So it's not like, oh, 80 bytes gets broken up into 40 plus 40 and I get it in two, two shots, no. So that's what datagram protocols are. The, the entire datagram comes as an atomic unit. Okay, so HTTP does not use that. HTTP uses TCP IP, which is more a stream character by character. Uh, it's a client server protocol, which means there is a client and a server as opposed to peer to peer protocol, where everybody is the same, they're equal. Not so in client server. It's a request response protocol, where one side sends a request and gets a, uh, the server sends the response. And that's it, that's the end of the communication. You might have another request followed with, it, with its paired up response. Uh, that also is possible in HTTP with the keep alive. But uh, still, you are supposed to think of request, I mean HTTP as one request and, a one, and one response for that. So, server examples, Apache, Nginx, Tomcat. So those are very, I, mean, I hope you've heard of them. Uh, client examples are Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, I'm sure you've heard of them, but also curl, which is a text based text um, or command line browser. So it, it is designed to send. Have you guys seen curl? I hope you have, but in case you haven't, let me just show you very quickly. The so curl is very simple. You go, you say a curl HTTP HTTP, let's say, on purpose, okay? Uh, www.google.com, right? And you got this, but you, so this is the response. This is the HTML you get, okay? 
but this is not interesting more interesting is when you do curl minus v that is much more interesting let me show you so because minus with minus v you will see the head ups so there you go now the same response but before the response come here uh, is the request this is what http request looks like exactly like this what you are looking at is exactly the HTTP request. Of course, you ignore the greater than sign and a leading space. So those are not part of the request. They are just there for formatting. But the request starts here. And ends here. Actually, it ends here uh, with a new line. Empty new line is also part of the request. So this is the request. Okay. What does it say? It says get slash http slash 1.1. How come it doesn't say anything about google.com? Well, it does. In this line, second line, it, it does say that. But in the first line, it, it doesn't say that because you are connected to google.com, right? So that's why it doesn't have to say that. And it says, I want to get the root of your doc document tree. Okay, and I'm using HTTP protocol 1.1. Then it sends three headers. These are the HTTP headers. This is the host header, this is the user agent header, and this is the accept header. It basically is saying the host name that I am using for you is www.google.com. So imagine if you if somebody comes to your house and they they say, hey, I'm looking, I mean, Joey, for example, you're sharing a house with, let's say your roommate's name is Brandon. I just made up a name. Okay. So if somebody comes to your house, they are obviously, they know your address, they come there. But then when they come there, if they don't say that I am here at Joey's house versus I'm here at Brandon's house, you don't know, right, who 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 they, they're who they want to see so otherwise in the absence of this host header you will never be able to host more than one website or more than one domain or more than one DNS name in one server so in your house if if there was no way to distinct if the if, if the visitor didn't say whether they are here to see Joey or or Brandon uh, you, only one person can live in that house then, right? Like, or, you know, like if mail came without the name, the, if mail only had the address but no name on it, it would be problematic, right? So, so that's what host header is doing. It is basically saying that we understand that, that this IP address, 216.58.219.132, could possibly be hosting multiple sites. That's why... I am going to tell you that I am here to talk to google.com. User agent basically is another header which says that what what is the name of this browser product and it's curl 7.47.0. <laughs> Finally the accept header says what kind of response will I accept? Uh, I might accept text html only or I might expect accept text slash plain only and so on and so forth but in this case this guy says I accept anything any major category and a subcategory is that clear so that's the request header are you with me okay now the response starts this is the response and same thing ignore the first two characters the greater than sign or less than sign in a space uh, you, you're supposed to that's there only for formatting but here comes HTTP 1.1 that's the beginning of this is literally the characters that they are sending to each other okay HTTP slash 1.1 so here's my response which is uh, this protocol here is my status code which is 200 that indicates success and then uh, you can say, you don't have to say okay, you can say anything, foobar. But uh, this is still says okay, means uh, all, it's all good. Alright, then 
hit the header after that so just like this this is the request uh, line itself this is the response line and the request line is followed by headers and an empty line similarly response line is followed by headers and hold on and an empty line again see that's the empty line so these are the headers plus an empty line so that is exactly how response also works as you can see in the response there are far more headers date this is the date stamp as uh, this is the time at the server expires equal to minus one that means expires way far into the future or did it already expire I, i'm not sure i think it expires um, I'm not sure i think it doesn't expire or it does expire or oh, it already expired as soon as it arrived i think yeah that's what it, it's all meaning to say you're not supposed to cache it cache control private mm, i'm not sure what that means uh, content type is text html that i'm sure you guys know what that is and here's the character set so a header can have multiple values in it separated by semicolon p3p i have no idea what p3p is okay server is gws i assume it stands for google web server uh, now these headers starting with x dash x dash means extension headers these are special headers that are not blessed by the HTTP protocol itself but you can make up your own anybody can make up their own headers if they want to or just they just have to remember to put x dash in front of it so that's so cross site uh, scripting protection one so this is between the the client and the server they can invent their own uh, frame options same origin set cookie this is an important header it is not an extension header this is part of the HTTP protocol and that is saying the server is saying to the client that hey you came here i am giving you this cookie you know here have a cookie okay don't eat it but just keep it with you and send it back to me every time you make a request again to me so it's sort of like a your your id number the server is handing out a name tag or an id number uh to the to the client because remember why because http is a uh the what is it correct Hi, yeah hypertext yes correct but it is yeah it is but the main thing is that it is a stateless protocol That's what i meant to say was it's a stateless protocol stateless means the the client comes to server again next time and the server is completely ignorant of who this client is it treats the client as if this is the first time okay so so server has amnesia that's what i'm trying to say server does not remember you now if you want the server to at least recognize your name or who you are so server is giving you a name or some a bunch of values as long as you send back the same values server will recognize you and then based on that server will do certain things which uh, you know continue the conversation from where you left off yesterday uh, last time right so then there is accept ranges very transfer encoding let's not go into that but those are headers and now there is the, there is a, a an empty line empty yeah empty line fo followed by the actual body of the response which is html so now what is missing in this is content length <laughs> you see how content type is something you expect in every response which is good but you should generally expect content length as well and as you can see in here there is no content length okay so what gives what does that mean uh so that means the client has to actually read the response and keep reading it until until the response simply you know trails off 
just this uh, the connection will drop. So in the absence of content length, that's that's your only option to read the response all the way to the end whenever the stream ends. And uh, unlike if you had content length, then you know that this is 425 bytes. So you read the 425 bytes and you ignore the rest. But when there is no content left, you just have to keep reading until end of file is reached. So I hope you guys have a little bit more understanding of the HTTP protocol. But I mean, any questions about all this? Okay. So we discussed most of these. So request methods, get and post. That was right here the very beginning of the request that's the request method okay um, so there are other request methods like so there is get and post then there is push, attach um, head option delete and I'm sure there might be others that I don't remember right now but uh, the get and post are the most two most common and the rest of them are not commonly used okay so but they they, they are legitimate all right within the host the request has to point to a path and that's this, this path. Uh, that that is the path sorry wait where did the yeah here That's the path. So in this case, the path is as the simplest path that can be, which is slash. Slash means root of the document tree. So usually it is more than that. Slash something, slash something like that, like a directory structure. Okay. So that basically, that path basically says what document do I want or what program I want you to execute for me. Okay, and then the response, they have uh, status codes like 200, which is what you saw here, uh, which means okay, and then everything is good, here's your response, 404 means not found, 500 means server error, and so on and so forth. They, some requests have post body, have body, and some don't, like get, so that, you see how this uh, request is this is the request line. Here's the bunch of headers, three headers, and that's it. That was the end of the request. Nobody, okay, because it's a get. Now, if you were to send a post, let me let me show you how. To, uh, let, let's do a post. Although Google.com probably doesn't take posts, but that doesn't prevent it from us from sending it. So we can say minus x post. Okay, and we can say minus minus data. Or yeah, minus d. And here's our post body. This is the post body. Okay. So here's so we did that. And it says, so here's the post request, right? Here are the headers. You see the content length, more headers, and content type is application X form URL encoded. So these are the headers. But where is the, uh, where is the, okay, upload, they didn't show. You see 21 characters. You might notice that 21 is the length of that, I think. Let's check. Echo minus N WC minus C. 21 characters. Did you, do you understand what I just did? Can anybody explain this?
No? Nobody? Sure. Why not? Yes, word count, yes, and minus, yeah, but that is, a pipe is for uh, I.O. redirection between programs as opposed to I.O. redirection to a file. This one is a bit, so there is one program, echo, so if I say, if I say echo foo, it prints foo, right? But I, but it also prints a new line after foo. If I don't want to print a new line, I say minus n. Then it pr did that without. Okay. So because I don't want a new line to be printed, otherwise it will count the new line. And wc minus c. Uh, wc is word count. You give it say one, two. Three. And control D if I press it says two lines, two lines, three words, fourteen characters. If I say I just want words, I guess. So one, two, three. And it only it's it's that it's not telling me lines and characters, it's only telling me the words. If I say WC minus C, one, two, three, and press control D, now it tells me only the characters. So echo this line, this, this, not line, this whatever sentence without the new line, and then count the characters. And that is 21, right? So that's why this says content length 21. Now, it did not show the body. The body of the request is in there, so I don't know why. Uh, it it doesn't print that. Anyways, it, it did. Imagine that it uh, this, this line was replaced by that. Okay, so that's what it sent. Now, here comes the response. 405, method not allowed. It says, hey, you're not supposed to post to this page. You're only supposed to get. The only method I'm allowing is hey, get and hit. That's it. Nothing else. All right. So the rest of it is some kind of a response. Okay. So was that helpful? Understanding how get, post, what do they look like? The responses usually have a body, not all of them, like three or four doesn't have a body, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, request, may, requ whether a request has a body is, depends on the type of the request. Get does not have a body. Post does have a body. Head does not have a body. Put and patch do have bodies, and like that. Okay. So, but all have request methods. All requests have request methods. They have path headers, oh, sorry, path and headers, sorry, there should be a comma between these two. There was supposed to be a comma there. And response status codes, so that all those things are across the board. Okay, let's look at the get request. I think we already looked at the get request. But the main thing you have to understand is get requests are for retrieving info, not for updating info. Okay. Uh, did you guys uh, look up item patent? Okay. All right. So then you should know. Wikipedia can tell you what item patent is. Okay. So getting an account balance should be a get request because you can query that any number of times. It doesn't change the account balance. But if you want to uh, post a back transaction, like you know post a charge or post a payment or transfer any of those will change the account balance that's why they should be a post they should not be a get okay that's that 
and DNS. All right, so domain names need to be registered, okay? And like spinspire.com, I registered that. And uh, the owners, basically, as, a, as an owner of spinspire.com, I have uh, my own name server on which I say server1.spinspire.com should point to this IP address. www.spinspire.com should point to this IP address, right? So that's because I own that domain, I get to decide what name server it the, is the primary name server for that domain. And that's, and I control that name server. So I decide where the various subdomains and the hosts, etc., point to, right? Now, the client, if, and client could be, again, me, myself, on my home computer. Uh, so, as a client, I will be using Comcast or Verizon or whatever, some such name server. That name server is going to eventually terminate into my Spinspire.com's name server and ask, Okay, well, I'm looking for www.spinspire.com. What's the address for that? And it says this is the address. Okay. All right. So let's go to DNS records. This is something you should understand. So there are. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> very good, very good, very good. I like that. So let's 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 uh, do that ourselves. So when you go to that, I, and that is exactly the the issue. Let me to prove. Let's do the curl minus v HTTP, right? And that IP address. So you are right. That's exactly what it says. Nginx, right? This is. This is what I was saying when I, uh, you know what is missing from this? Because host is, it says that IP address is the host name. So the server, so you're basically knocking on, you're sending an e, a, a, a letter to an address without name. It is not, so, you know, the response comes that, uh, a lot of people live here. I don't know which which person you're looking for. So, to fix that situation, pay attention to this, okay? Now, I will send a request to the same exact IP address, same way, okay? There is one thing I will change. I will send a header. I will send a host header. Okay. Now watch. I, when I did that, it sent this. Now it is saying that it is moved permanently to that place. Do you see the difference? There is HTTPS basically. Instead of HTTP, use HTTPS. That's what he's saying. So if I, to fix that, if I do this, sorry, it says, oh uh, wait, this is not valid HTTP, the certificate doesn't match that IP address. So let me just say minus K and then ignore the certificate validity. And there you go, I get a real now I got the real spinspire.com uh, front page. Now let me once again explain what happened here. The request that I sent is too much. So let, let me just uh, pipe it, pipe this through. send the output over to devnull. Okay, so there it is. So the body of course shows up, but look at the uh, request. 
I send the host of Spacefire.com and then it, uh, although even now I'm pointing to it using the IP address, you see that? So the main difference, the reason why you get that Nginx and not Spacefire.com is because you're not using the correct host name. If I say, I put the same IP address, I'll get the same thing. Okay, but if I say www.spinspire.com or just whatever, then it will go through, through the redirection and most importantly, it will send a host header. Okay. Let me show you here. It will be more meaningful. So this time when it sent that request, it sent the host header. Request headers. That that's the important thing. Uh, so Vladimir, do you is it does it help? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, I do. That's the thing. Yeah, you're right. So, in fact, if you, if you, you even if you send it to the right, uh, let me show you something else. Let's say that you send it to the correct host name, HTTPS, okay? So everything is correct, right? Of course, you will get, you'll get the right response, uh, right website like this. Okay, wait, what happened? Uh, yeah, so you got the right response uh, thing, right? Good, great. The only problem is if you mess up your host, host header like this, See, you got nothing. You get something else. If you put the mm -hmm. host host in, you got a different uh, website. Okay. All right, so let's keep going. Then. Okay, so DNS records. You have different types of DNX records. The two records that you must know the difference between is A records and C name records. A records, name points to a value. C name records, name points to another name. That's it. So let me show you an example. So if I say, this is host in Linux is a host name lookup tool. Okay, the host spinspire.com. It says spinspire.com has address of this, right? But now watch what happens when I say www.spinspire.com. www.spinspire.com is an alias to spinspire.com. And then it makes another lookup to say if spinspire.com is pointing to this. So this is a case of name pointing to another name. While this is a case of name pointing to an IP. So therefore this must be, this record is what type and tell me what, what is this type, this one. So first one is, is of type. First one is what type? When a name points to a number, it's, it is of type what? A record. Okay. When a name points to another name, it is C name, C name record. Yeah. Yeah. 
then there are also txt and others so we, you don't need to worry about txt it's, it's it's just like you could put your public key on your on your txt record if you wanted okay so protocol default ports uh, you know these are some you should know these basically at least these you should i mean smtp ss oh one missing in this is ssh22 so you should know SMTP, HTTP, HTTPS, and SSH22, at least, those. Okay. URL, what's the URL? You should be able to break down a URL into, into its part. So here is the scheme. Scheme is not exactly same as protocol. Usually this, they might be same, but not always. Like the case of mail2. Mail2 is not a protocol. It's only a scheme. Mail2 will use SMTP protocol to actually send the email, but it's just a scheme, naming scheme. So, plus you must understand that HTTPS is not the scheme name. This is the scheme, the whole thing. Okay. All right, then comes the DNS name. So DNS name is up to this point or the host name. Okay. Then comes the path. That's the path. Then comes the query string. That's the query string. And then comes the fragment. That's the fragment. So you probably, you guys should know how to read that. I don't need to go through the details. Page loading. Now, so, you enter URL, DNS lookup happens. I, I think you, you guys, I don't need to explain any of this. Can I, do I need to? Okay, so you, you've seen all of this. So let's just go, keep going. And then finally, I ended on the note of Ajax. So, unless you use Ajax, right? So normally, uh, whenever you go to some site right. and let's say you go spitspy.com and now if you look at the network tab okay so if I click on something I don't know let's click on what we do so this caused entire page to the previous page was fully unloaded and look at the sheer number of requests that went out 171 requests that's pretty high right so most of them although are cached straight coming out of cache you might think that these are requests but in reality they were not never made do you see what it says here yeah from memory cache. So this, uh, there was no request ever made to the server. This, these never left the browser. All of them. Then there are some that were, okay, here render. Contextual render, get data. Admin copy, get data. <coughs> I don't know what that is quick edit so these are as you can see these are ajax requests xhr you see that uh, asynchronous requests in any case uh, and then there is one request to google analytics completely different place another one for attachments quick edit attachments so that is happening because i'm logged in if i was not logged in it would be different so I'm now locked out and now you shouldn't see those you see everything is from except the Google Analytics request was still made but everything else is from cache so when when we issued a logout logout by the way was a get request and it in, instead of producing a response it said it redirected 
302 temporary redirect and they just sent you to the front page okay so that's the location header tells you where to go all right so that's uh, that's the recap of the uh, you had some questions joy or did we already cover it Okay. Does anybody have any questions? Header and ship. What are you talking about? Um, you talking about here? I mean, I didn't get it. Oh, in in this, uh, what is between header and body? Oh, you mean head and body, head and body, okay, 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 so, oh, you mean in here, do you mean this? What is between header and HTML in a post request? I am not able to understand the question. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So you're saying I should run the post request again, right? Just to see, just to show you, explain to you what's going on. Okay, so let's try this, right? Okay, and now, what, so here is the headers of the po request headers. Then there will be the post body, which they hide for some reason. And then there will be response. Response headers. And then the response body. Make sense? Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Questions? Okay. Um, so, the next thing I was going to discuss with you guys was writing a simple TCP/IP program, like a server, uh, writing a server and writing a client also. So I don't have the presentation and everything ready, but. I can very quickly show you what I have. Um, so hold on. Yes, yeah, so the next one is TCP/IP programming fundamentals, but I don't have a full-fledged presentation yet. So we'll 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 talk about that. Okay, but let me just show you the code. At this point, I can at least show you the code. So here I have written and I didn't write it sorry I, I actually googled it and I found some good examples client.c client in python server in c and server in python so let me show you the python version even though you might not actually uh, know Python, but it's very easy to read, very easy to understand. So don't worry about it if you don't know Python. So let me see. So this is server. So let me show you. Before we run this, uh, before we do anything, let's run them. Because that this is show you what the server will do and what the client will do. Okay, so uh, let me run the client. It says, uh oh, client failed, could not connect. It says, 
see how here it says fa file. Uh, what is this? Socket error. Connection refused. Right? So that is the first rule of client server. Client doesn't start first. Server starts. Is starting first. Okay? So that's why you need to run the server first. Because server start, uh, binds to a listening port and then waits. So server has uh, started listening on port 10,000. Okay, now the client runs. Okay, that's it, done. The client sends this message. This is a message, it will be repeated. And then the server receives it, And but he receives it in 16 byte chunks for whatever reason, that's how he likes to read. He read this, then he read this, and then he read this. So what he does is, then he echoes it back. Okay? So, it, oh, by the way, he also received empty, which is the end of the string. Then he echoes it back. But look, you have to understand. Look at the client's address. Do you see the client address? So the server and client were running on the same machine, of course. That's why... Uh, so you should be familiar do you are you familiar with this uh, local host or 127.0.0.1 this is so this is called the there's a name for it this kind of address has a name of course we know we know it as local host but it has a technical name loopback address so this is called loopback because it refers to yourself. Uh, you can think of it that uh, it has me, the server calling me itself. Okay? So, but it says connection is from this IP address, which makes sense because it's from the same, same machine. But look, the port number. The port number, if I, if I clear and start, let me just put a little gap and I do this again. And look at the port number. Somehow it incremented a little bit. If I do it again, one more time, it incremented a little bit again. So, the point I'm making is, in a client-server client TCP IP communication, the server's port number matters a lot. The client's port number doesn't matter a whole lot. Because client is not the one waiting for a, The server doesn't need to find the client. The client needs to find the server. So that's why server's port number is, is always fixed. IP address and the server's IP address and, uh, and port number they should be fixed. So the server should be easy to find, basically. The client doesn't need to be easy to find. So every time the client uses some random port, whatever port it can grab, it, it doesn't use care. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing is the client is sending a chunk and the server is reading it 16 bytes at a time, so that's why it's, it gets broken up. So when the server sends the res response, it, they send it back in 16 byte chunks. These are 16 bytes. So that's why it comes back broken up like that. All right, now that we have seen what it does, let's uh, take a look at the code. Let's look at the client code first because it's easier. So ignore everything else because we are going to focus only on TCP IP. We have sock, socket, socket dot socket. So socket is the library from which there is a function called socket. Here's the library. Socket library has a function called socket. It, it takes two things. What is the address family and what is the type of the socket? So address family is inet 
as an internet because there can be an address family in Unix for inter-process communication, local communication in Unix address family. Then the type of socket is either stream, in case of TCP IP it's stream, and in case of UDP it is datagram, sock datagram. So because this is TCP, we do you and this is this picks IP and this picks TCP. And now you got a socket. So far this socket is just created, it is not connected to anything. Okay, then you have to build a a server address. So you give a host name and a port number. Okay, and then you are just printing it. I'm gonna going to connect here. But now this is the real thing, sock. So this was the unconnected socket. Now you're getting, you're connecting it to the server address, and the server address is localhost port 10,000. Hopefully it, it works. If it doesn't, it will throw an error. But if it is connected, at the end of this sock will will be our connected socket, which means you can use set sock dot send all. So you build a string, and you say. I am sending this string over the socket. Then you run a while loop and you say as long as I have not received what I am expecting to receive, keep going. Obviously I am expecting to receive the same message echoed back to me, which means the whatever the number of characters are in this message is what I am expecting. That's the length of the message of the expected amount. And so far I have received zero bytes. Somebody is uh, playing with his <laughs> microphone. <laughs> it's causing a lot, a lot of uh, sound. Hello? Can, can you mute yourself? Because someone is uh, playing with the... I'm not sure who... Uh, must be stop. Oh, fine. All right, let's stop. Okay, so I was uh, saying, yeah. So amount received is initially uh, you're expecting a certain number of characters, whatever is the number of characters in this length of this string. But initially, of course, you haven't received anything. You say keep going while what you received is less than what you expect. Then. You read 16 bytes. Sock dot receive, which means uh, you're receiving 16 bytes. You want you have only 16 bytes to receive. You want to receive 16 bytes. Why 16 bytes? No reason. Just because you have room for 16 bytes. You don't want to read 4 gigabyte at a time or something like that. Right? And then you say, okay, the length of the data as long whatever it is is you increment amount of heat by that much okay so this is the plus equal to which means increment by that much and then it prints that i received so and so data and you keep going that while loop continues of course until you have received all the bytes you were expecting so that is the client i hope it was fairly clear of what the client was doing any questions about the client? Client is simpler than server, so that's why. Any questions about the client? All right, let's talk about the server then. So, server. Server is exactly the same kind of socket. You build a, so you create a socket which is exactly same as the other one. It's a TCP, it's an IP socket, so this one. It's a TCP socket, so this one. So IP as in address family internet, uh, it's a TCP socket, so it's a stream socket as opposed to a datagram socket. So it's sock.stream, underscore stream, which is what TCP IP is. TCP IP is stream oriented, and uh, TCP, UDP IP is datagram. Then, so you build a socket, at that point the socket is unbound to anything. You, you build, you create a server address 
which is pair of the host name and the uh, port number. When you bind it, you see how the, here this guy did a connect, but this guy doesn't do connect, he binds it. What does that mean? That means that it's a, you know, a socket is, an, is a Unix concept, not a networking concept. Server address is, is a networking concept. And with this, you combine the two. You said, here's my Unix socket, Unix concept of a socket. Let me combine it with the networking concept of an IP and a port. And now the socket is bound to both. Then this is what starts the server. Bind does not start the server. Listen starts the server. So you're saying soft.listen for one. What does that mean? It means whatever hostname or IP address plus the port that I have I have agreed to so that I am bound to start listening on it and have a wait queue of one so that's like saying you know a doctor can see one patient at a time but it, they can have a wait queue of 10 people right 15 people but here you're saying only one wait queue of one so that means as the server is, is interacting with one client the second client can wait but there can be no third client so the, the second client will will be held up in connect let me show it to you so here's the server running and i want to basically cause a certain delay so i'm going to do client.py I want to basically cause a long delay. Okay. Um, so before I send, I'll just sleep for 10 seconds. I don't even know how to put it. Sleep is not different. Okay. Wait, how about sys.sleep? Import time dot clip, okay. I have to say import time and then I can say time dot clip. Okay. Um, one second. I wanted to see okay delay in five seconds. Okay, second. So ten seconds it will wait. So now if I say line dot py See, so this is this this is sleeping for ten seconds. And it finished. Okay. So now if I do open a few more windows. Okay. So here, this is the first guy. Oh sorry, I should see the two the sorry. I run the client, this is the first client, this is the second client, it's also waiting, right? But now the third client, let's see if it can wait. And third is also working, okay. I think the first one might have finished by now. Yeah, it finished. Uh, sorry, I'm not able to show you. But basically at some point, they will, they will stop working. want to show you but I'm not able to show you. They'll start getting refusal. They're all okay, I don't know why, but they this is okay. Sorry, I was under the impression that, that these will uh, start getting refused. Connection refused. But they are not getting it. 
I'm not totally sure why. Maybe I have misunderstood. Okay. Anyway. Sorry about that. I will try to figure out what a listen one means, really. Um, okay. So, back to this. I thought that listen one means this, that one guy can connect, another guy can... Yeah, so for some reason it's not doing what I thought it should do. But le never mind. Uh, so listen parameter, this is the way to and I don't know what, what it means anymore. But then listen means set up shop but, and then start listening on that port number. Now, uh, once you have you are listening, you say while true means endless loop, right? And then you say sock dot accept. This is the blocking call. This is this is the one that blocks because you are going to wait until uh, somebody comes and connects. So this is this is where the server blocks and he gets a connection connection is a separate socket is yet another socket you can start re reading from the connection and the client address is also re returned from the accept so two things are returned uh, this is the peculiarity of of, uh, of python python allows returning multiple values from the function so that's what we are seeing in any case, um, once you have the connection, oops, once you have the connection, you start. Um, reading from it with receive, and then you can send to it with send all or send, just send. And uh, so you this guy is reading sixteen bytes at a time for whatever reason. That's why it shows broken up. And then close. So the one, so the key thing that you have to understand is that the the client is two step, three step. Create a socket. Uh, create an address, and connect to that address, and then start, you know, start communicating. Server has one extra step. So create a socket, create an address bind the socket to the address uh, and then listen this is the extra step and then from that listening port create connections multiple connections so first time when i learned all this i was a little bit thrown off by the whole thing the so server is far more complicated than client is and uh, client server has four steps instead of three and uh, also uh, server has two sockets, two different types of sockets. One is the listening socket, the other is connection socket. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you about this. Make sense? Probably not, but Mm -hmm. Good question. Very good question, actually. So, socket is an internal concept, internal to the process, to programming. It's a programming or an API concept. Well, a port is not an API concept. Port is an external concept. It is. It helps in establishing the address of the endpoint. So, so port is something... So you can think of it like this, you know, port is, uh, oh, sorry, not, well, the IP address and port together make up the full address, right? Now, socket is just a throwaway data structure. The port is expressed in the outside world with an IP address number and a port number, right? While socket is completely, in, is a programming concept. I don't know if that helped at all. So socket is, yeah, sorry.
Well, no, that is this guy. Server address is that. Okay. Socket is a transient concept. Basically, so, socket is, is, is like a use and throw. You create a socket, you bind it, and then at the end of it, the socket is socket is sort of like an object, like a data structure. As opposed to, as opposed to port, which is not a data structure. Port is a number, is an address. So the same IP and port combination will spawn thousands and thousands of sockets. Make sense? So you, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, uh, let's say it like this. Uh, Mm, what's a good way to say it? Um, well, yeah, think of it like this. Um, you know, if I'm speaking and you're listening, my mouth is sort of like a port and your ear is sort of like a port, let's say, right? But every conversation we have can be a socket. And every word in that conversation is sort of like a packet that goes. So each time we could, yeah. So, so socket is transient. Each connection is, is socket. But the port doesn't 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 disappear at that point. Port is still there, even if when nobody's listening on it, port always remains. So. So plus, of course, then port. Is, is externally visible in the sense that when I say visible, I mean port is outside the machine. You come into the machine using IP and port. And inside the machine, it manifests itself, that particular connection manifests itself as socket. Okay. All right, what else? Questions? Katana? Anything? I don't know what part of it you, did you catch or didn't catch. Any questions, anybody? Hey, Katana, are you there? Katana. Hello? No? Okay. All right. Okay. So if there are no other questions, we can we can close this conversation. Any No, it's very, it, it, there is no, uh, I'm glad that you asked that question. So let me, let me uh, change these two programs, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, okay, wait, where's that sleep thing? Hold on. Let me, let me run these on two different servers, okay? Two different machines. Okay, so mm, so let's let me go to server one on this machine and uh, dev Python. So I have the server program right here. Same server, okay. So instead of localhost, I will make it listen on server1.spinspire.com. So this is the server, okay? So it doesn't even need to listen to spin server. So obviously you don't want to hard code your server address here. And then it won't run on any other machine. So it is better to, to give it an address of 0.0.0.0. .0, this means all IP addresses on this machine. Okay? You with me? So that's the server. 
let's run the server. Starting up on 0 .0 .0 .0 .0. Oops, what the heck just happened? Oh. Did I do something? No, no, I, I just scrolled, I just scrolled. Okay, waiting for a connection. Now here on the client, this is the client. Let's look at the client. Client.py. Here, instead of connecting to localhost, let's connect to server1.spinspy.com. Now, how come I cannot say 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0 here? Right, 0, 0 means nothing. That, then it will connect, it will start listen. That is for listening, not for connecting. When you want to send, and when you're receiving your, when you refer to yourself, you can say me. But when you refer to me, you cannot say me, you have to say Jitesh. So, right. So in this situation, you have to give an address. So I gave this address and now I run. So the only thing I changed in both the places was the address of the server, correct? And connecting. Oh, yeah, sorry. I have a firewall going. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, there is a firewall. Let me see if I can get rid of the firewall. Okay, I stopped the firewall. Let's hope this works. Yeah, it worked. See that? Did so this is to show you that there was nothing special about that local host thing. You replace it with an, a real IP, a, a real address, and it it all works. Am I making sense? So. Uh, and I had to, uh, at first it didn't work because there was a firewall running U UFW firewall. And I, I'm just going to put it back. So now it's running again. So the UFW firewall is uncomplicated firewall. It simply drops every packet that comes in at an unauthorized address. A any, any, if I say so UFW status, it will tell you. So, oops. So it says, I allow, you see, I allow, 422, I allow from anywhere, 480, I allow from anywhere, 443, I allow from anywhere, that's it, and then the other is IPv6, everything else, I drop, so, as you can see, port 10,000 is not in the list, so that's why it, just dropping packets, so I just had, I turned off the firewall for a while, and then tested Okay, so that, so in other words, there is no difference between client and server. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, no, no, I mean, there's no difference between local, uh, connecting to localhost or in li listening to localhost versus doing the same thing for public IP addresses. Works the same way. Okay, all right, anything else? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. That's right. This imp oh. Uh, yeah, I could have done PHP. I agree. But uh, I found a good example. I like Python in general. It's a very clean language. I, I although. My whole business runs on PHP. I don't like PHP that much. <laughs> I mean, I could have shown it in Java, but Java is, is not a good language for just pure uh, reading, quick reading and all that. It requires some knowledge. The other one is C. So if you want to take a look at client.c, 
it is, uh, as you can see, much more complicated. I mean, things are, are more, com I mean, this is just the client. The server is even more complicated. Uh, if you see the server, the server is far more complicated. It's just, so because of that much stuff going on in the server, I, I didn't think C was a good, good choice. But I felt Python, even if you don't know Python, it's very easy to read. Yeah, but, but the purpose of this exercise is not to teach you Python or even teach you uh, TCP IP programming also is not the purpose, okay? The purpose is to teach you TCP IP concepts. That there is such a thing as a listening and binding and accepting and connecting and, and all that. That's all. Because in, in your real world, you're not going to do most of these things. But you should have some experience with it so that you understand the basic concept. In, in your uh, programming career, you're probably going to just connect using an AJAX, XH, XML HTTP AJAX uh, request to a server. And in this, if, even if you're writing, so if you're writing client, you'll, you'll be making AJAX request using some jQuery-like library. And if you're writing a server, you'll be writing a server that doesn't deal with HTTP directly. The server deals with, with uh, HTTP, yes, but you don't write the server. You write the program that runs inside the server, which means uh, a servlet in, J in Java or a PHP file in PHP. So when you're doing PHP programming, you don't do any networking, right? The networking is handled by the Apache server, Nginx server. So, so yeah, so you won't actually have to do any of this, but you should understand without this, you won't be able to leverage the power of HTTP. All right, good. Shall we stop here? If you think, uh, yeah, if you cannot make it, we can move. Like, we don't have to do it all three days.